Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Let's face it, boa breeding can be very challenging, so it's not surprising that there's all sorts of tips and tricks floating around among the boa community that supposedly increase your odds of success. So what are these tips and tricks, and do they really work? Well, that's what I'm going to discuss in today's episode. And we'll also look at beautiful boas like this Venezuelan uh, true red tail, so be sure to stay tuned. So I'm at the point of the breeding season now. This is uh, April. I've been at it since about November. Many of my animals have been together now for four to five months. And although I've seen lots of breeding activity among many of them, there are still a few pairs where I've yet to see anything. It doesn't look like the female is gravid. So I'm kind of at the point where I want to do whatever I can to try to improve my success and to try to make these animals breed and unfortunately there is quite a bit of breeding boas that's outside of our control we can raise up the animals as best we can get the best animals get them really healthy uh, choose compatible pairs um, but ultimately it's up to the boas to decide if they want to breed or not and so boa breeders obviously want to do whatever they can to increase their odds of success so there's these ideas which have propagated among the boa community and many people swear by them as far as increasing the odds that your boas are going to mate. And so these of course are usually anecdotal. It's something that seems to work for, some per for a person and then other people report it seems to work for them. But these aren't uh, ideas which are supported by uh, careful scientifically controlled experiments. It doesn't mean that they're not legitimate. It just means who knows. You know, maybe it does have some effect on whether boas breed or not, or maybe it's just kind of like a superstition people think it does. But many of the behaviors we do are really come down to superstition anyway. Sometimes things become a self-fulfilling prophecy, so just because we do something that we think is going to make something better, sometimes it actually does become better. You know, otherwise known as the placebo effect. So now on to some specific ideas. And one idea I just heard the other day from one of the viewers, so thank you for this. Um, but the idea involves just swapping cages. So basically you take boas, a pair of boas that are in one cage, you move them to another cage at another uh, point in the snake room or even in a completely different room. And the idea is because the cage is in a slightly different microenvironment that sometimes that, that change will stimulate your boas to mate. And that the cage may even be a different size or different shape. It may have different cage furnishings or even different cage furniture. Um, it's also possible that some uh, parts of the cage may have the scent of other boas that were in there. And that there may be some slight difference in the environment within the new cage that might stimulate your boas to mate if they were otherwise unreceptive in the previous cage. Um, for example, you may even just change where they are in the rack. Maybe they didn't want to breed up at the high, the top of the rack, but if you move them down to the bottom of the rack, it might be a sufficiently different environment that it might stimulate them to breed. You know, it might be slightly different temperature, it might be different light, um, it might have a different traffic pattern as far as people moving through the room. Just something slightly different that you can't really even put your finger on, but it might stimulate your boas to mate. Uh, you can almost think of it like a vacation, you know, like if you have a couple that, you know, maybe they need to spice up their relationship, so they take a romantic getaway to Napa Valley for the weekend, or maybe they rent a scenic or a rustic cabin in the Poconos for a while, you know, to breathe new life into the relationship. It's kind of like that for boas. And I don't know if this works. I've actually given it a try with a few of my pairs, which didn't seem to be wanting to mate uh, previously. And, you know, over the next couple weeks, I'm going to just monitor to see if there's any difference. You know, I don't think it's anything that could hurt my animals. So I figured, you know, why not give it a shot, see if it works. Um, and hopefully it's going to, the change in the environment is going to stimulate my reluctant boas to mate. One of the oldest tricks in the book when it comes to trying to stimulate boas to breed involves a shed skin from a male and or a female. And the idea is pretty simple. You just take a shed skin from one male and then you put it into the enclosure with the breeding pair, the male and the female. 
and sometimes the scent of the skin or something to do with the skin uh, will stimulate the male to breed. It could be that the male detects the scent of the other male with the skin and you know feels this competition and the need to court the female because he thinks that there may be another male around which is going to try to mate with his female. And this is similar to the whole idea of using multiple males to increase your breeding success. And I actually did a video on that recently, so check that video out if you want. But using just the skin is a little safer because you know uh, exactly which male has fertilized the female if she does become gravid, and you don't need to use the second male in the enclosure. The second male can actually be mating with another female in a different enclosure, so it's advantageous for that reason. And then there's a um, similar method by which you use a skin from a different female. And sometimes it may be if the male doesn't like the female he's with, if you put the skin from the other female in, maybe he likes that female a little bit better. And something about her scent and her pheromones and you know her the chemistry of the skin might get him in the mood, so to speak. So you just kind of mix it up with skins from different animals, putting them in different enclosures. And so it's a fairly safe thing to do. Of course, you want to make sure that none of your animals have mites or any kind of diseases that can be spread by transferring the skins around like this. But if you have a clean collection, it's not really something that you have to worry about. And then there's even variations of this technique where you use uh, some substrate from one enclosure. Maybe the substrate's been defecated on by one of the snakes and it has that scent. And sometimes putting that into the enclosure with the other snakes will get the either the male or the female more in the mood. Um, as you can probably tell, this is kind of similar to the first trick I told you about where you swap cages. And maybe something about the difference in the smell or the different microenvironment might stimulate the animals to get more into the breeding mood. Next, we have quite a few tricks out there circulating among boa breeders where they try to simulate the nat natural environment in order to make their boas mate. And of course, the simplest would just be the cycling conditions that people use to breed boas, like cooling at night slightly or dropping, reducing the photo period, things like that. Apart from that, probably the most common is just spraying down the mating pairs of boas to simulate either a rainstorm or increased humidity, things like that. And there's a lot of anecdotal evidence that spraying your boas with just a spray bottle like this on a regular basis may help increase the mating behavior. Um, I spray my down my boas anyway, even when they're not mating, just simply to increase the humidity. So I can't really say for sure if this has been part of success in my boas. Um, but it certainly doesn't seem to hurt and they need the high humidity anyway. But beyond that, people will actually pair up boa mating pairs when there's a natural event occurring, which they think might be conducive to better breeding success. And so uh, often when storms are coming in, you know, there's a, a, the barometric pressure goes down and many people feel that that's a good advantageous time to pair up the male and female. Uh, because they're more likely to mate successfully during that period. And then the variation has to do with the phases of the moon. So some people feel that when you poke up a male and female boa when there's a full moon, that they're more likely to uh, breed and copulate and leading to successful reproduction. And it's possible that boas might have some innate mechanism uh, that tracks the cycles of the moon. And in the wild, many boas are nocturnal, so they come out at night to try to find a mate. And it might be easier to find the mate when there's a full moon and there's some light. So I don't know if that's true or not, you know, but many people swear by it. I don't even know if a captive boa would be able to track the cycles of the moon, you know, but these are amazing animals. So I wouldn't be surprised if they had a lot of abilities that we are just barely beginning to understand. And so a few more tips involve stimulating the animals in order to make them mate. And some people have reported that rough handling of the male boa will stimulate him to be more likely to copulate. And so in order to, to accomplish this rough, rough treatment, people have taken boas, male boas, put them into pillowcases or snake sacks, and then they put them in the trunk of their car 
and drive on a washboard dirt road you know for a period of time after which they've reported that the animals are much more likely to copulate leading to successful reproduction and a variation is that people will take a snake out in a pillowcase or snake sack and just kind of shake it up and down a little bit you know personally i wouldn't want to do that because i think i might injure my animal um, but some people claim that this actually works and then Yet another way that they can accomplish this is to use a snake stick or some other kind of blunt long tool to kind of scratch the back of the animal. You know, obviously you don't want to do this too vigorously that you injure your animal, but enough to rough them up a bit. And it's been reported that in some cases that that leads to increase in mating. So I've tried most of these. I haven't tried the uh, rough handling. Um, but I've tried like the spraying and the shed skins and that kind of thing. Personally, I haven't really seen any huge improvements in mating. I mean, I haven't done any kind of controlled studies or anything like that. It's basically just been animals which are reluctant to mate. You know, I'll try anything, but unfortunately, I haven't seen a lot of these tips have really worked that well. You know, we'll see how the cage swap idea goes because this is the first time I've tried this and hopefully uh, that might improve my odds of success. But remember, these are all already the animals which I haven't seen any mating for the last four months or so. So who knows if these animals just have a reason why they're not gonna mate and if this will do anything at all. But you know, I gotta keep trying. You know, as boa breeders, we wanna do everything we can to try to increase our success in our boa breeding trials. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any other tips that are said to increase breeding success or even tips that you've used either successfully or unsuccessfully, I'd really like to hear them. So please comment below. Uh, thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.